Yes, good afternoon. I am uh, Dr. John Nordling in the Department of uh, Exegetical Theology, uh, New Testament at Concordia Theological Seminary. And it's my great privilege to uh, 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 preview with you the text for Proper 25C, uh, which is Luke 18, 9 to 17. But as usual, I like to begin with the collect for the day. So please pray with me now, and then we'll uh, begin. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and always ready to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down on us the abundance of your mercy. Forgive us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and give us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except by the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> so a wonderful prayer. Just a couple of things about this prayer that really prepare us for the gospel lesson. Uh, first of all, um, uh, the first petition, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray. This phrase right here. Here. Is that picking up, John? Okay. Uh, to hear, then we to pray. And uh, uh, so, so uh, then we to pray. So one of the things this uh, lesson about is, is about prayer. Uh, namely, the Pharisees' prayer, uh, the, the false example, as it were, and then the, uh, the tax collector. Uh, and I, I would suggest that both of these um, are presented uh, as an example of how not to pray, <laughs> the danger that we have as we pray. And I think at heart we are all Pharisees. I, I know I am. I don't know about you. And then in our sin we resemble the tax collector. So that's one thing. Uh, then we to pray. And then another uh, thing that jumped out at me was this uh, phrase, um, the abundance of your mercy. This phrase right here, let me underline that. Uh, because um, there is such great mercy given, of course, to the tax collector and, and, uh, and each one of us, uh, despite our sinfulness. Then another thing is forgive us those things of which our conscience is afraid. And that, of course, would be the things that the Pharisee says right at the beginning where he mentions the swindler, the unjust, the adulterers, and then even as this tax collector here. <laughs> okay, so um, the Pharisee kind of enumerates these things. And then one more thing before we go on, and that is except by the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And then it goes in kind of the conclusion. But this bit about the mediation of Jesus Christ, now you don't have the exact language in the text, but you do have uh, in Luke 18, 14, this glorious dedikaiomenos. He, he left having been justified instead of that one, okay? And that dikai ao language, I will spend some time on that. So with that in mind, let's now pre uh, proceed to the text. And uh, <clears throat> what I'd like to do, John, is uh, if we could go to the second part, down at the bottom of the text, yeah, this very last part, there's, there's kind of a, a, a two-partite, uh, uh, it's divided, and I just want to make sure that I get to this last part. So I'm going to treat that first, if you don't mind. Um, but this last part about how they were bringing uh, their children to him in order that he might touch them. Uh, and seeing the uh, disciples uh, re began or were continually rebuking them, but Jesus um, encouraged them or called them to himself, saying, uh, for, uh, permit the children to be coming to me 
and don't hinder them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Truly I tell you, whoever re, uh, does not receive the kingdom of God as a child absolutely shall not enter into it. That's strong future negation there at the end. Ume ace elthe ace autan. Now, this is just a wonderful text. I really, really enjoy this, this little text. I got to tell you a story. Um, when I was in Nigeria this past August, uh, I was, of course, uh, permitted to preach twice. And the second time I preached, I preached in this little small town, uh, this, this little small church uh, that was set up just seven years ago in Uyo, kind of downtown, slummy uh, Uyo. And so seven years ago, there wasn't a church at all. And this time there was, and there were all these children. So this was Children's Sunday in the Lutheran Church of, of uh, Nigeria. And this is a common thing. I mean, it's here in Luke's Gospel. Uh, the parallel is Matthew 19, 13 to 15, and Mark 10, 13 to 16. So I preached on the Matthean parallel to this text. And it was glorious. I just had a wonderful time. Uh, preaching this text, and the children were there. So, um, uh, <clears throat> I just want to make sure if if you're uh, you know if you don't want to handle the the uh, the Pharisee and tax collector because it it does get involved. You can just preach this text and and just lose yourself in it. Of course, the the brefe, um, these are the unspeaking children. Uh, Infantes is the Latin equivalent, those that cannot speak. So, so they're bringing uh, their children to him that he might touch them. So you have the touch of Jesus. And then there's a great irony here because the disciples see this and they begin or they keep on rebuking them. And you know in some of the parallel texts, Jesus then rebukes the uh, disciples for uh, really not doing what they're charged to do, and that is to preach the gospel and to administer sacraments. And they are standing in the way of giving holy baptism to these children. And, th and uh, this, this is an idea that Luke doesn't develop, kind of a Jesus uh, reaction to the disciples, but it is in the other two parallels, if you check it out. And then um, Jesus' statement, he uses children as as an example for all of us how we enter God's kingdom as a child and that we bring nothing of our own but it's all by grace through faith and of course a child's uh, trust uh, in his parents and um, we outgrow that unfortunately as as adults so there's more there but uh, it kind of gives you a flavor now let's go up to the beginning part of this text and, uh, and just kind of work through it. Um, uh, and he said uh, to some of those, this, so this is the frame you have right here, this, this part, uh, th this kind of sets it out. Uh, and he said to certain people, <laughs> tinos, uh, who were trusting in themselves. Now this word tinos, I've done work with this elsewhere, certain people, um, as if you don't know who they are. I mean, that's, there's a kind of irony in that. And uh, uh, so uh, they would have been known to the um, audience uh, for whom Luke uh, writes the gospel, okay? Um, so trusting in themselves uh, that they are dikaioi right here, and uh, turning up their noses or despising the rest, this following parable. Okay, see how that goes? He puts that in um, predicate position for uh, Tautain. And then, and then he lays it out. And we have um, a positive example A, uh, well, uh, not quite, uh, verse 10. Uh, two guys, two, two blokes, two men uh, went up. They're in Israel, you always go up to Jerusalem. We're going up to the temple and then prosyuxasthai, to pray. Now, we've got the language of prayer here uh, in uh, both 10 and 11. Um, this word for prayer, prox, uh, prosyukamai, there's, 
you know, the deixis and then the entuxis, if you check out 1 Timothy 2. Uh, but as I see it, the prosuke is the congregational prayer. It's a little more generic than the other two. And notice that, um, uh, so they go up uh, to pray, and then it, it says, uh, the one hot haste, pharisaios, the one a Pharisee, and the other a tax collector. So it's just laid out, uh, A and B. And you know what's coming. You know, the one is going to be a positive example and the other negative. Now, how do I turn this off uh, like that? Okay. Um, okay. So, um, uh, then, then he begins then in, uh, is there a way I can put that? Away? Well, I guess it's okay. Um, so, uh, he starts then with the Pharisee in, in verse 11. And then the tax collector is down here in verse uh, 13. So, the Pharisee, uh, standing uh, by himself, uh, prayed tauta, okay, thus and so or as follows. That's the significance of this tauta. And uh, praseyuketo is imperfect, right? And so good readers of texts will always ask, what uh, is the significance of the imperfect? Does it me mean he began to pray? Or maybe this is the customarily way, customary way that he usually prayed. Now, there's a warning for us because um, I would say that uh, especially pastors, but any Christian is a Pharisee at heart. I mean, we, we, Pharisees get a bum rap in the New Testament, but basically they're people who want to be pure. And isn't that what a Christian wants to be? Okay? And many times, uh, the, the tag is scribes and Pharisees. Well, you know what? At seminary, we're training our students to be scribes. They're learning Greek. They're learning Hebrew. They're learning how to exegete texts. Isn't that what goes on in churches? And the answer is yes. So before we come down too hard on the Pharisees, look in the mirror. I mean, that's basically what we are. We're uh, people who uh, follow God's law uh, willingly as Christians, um, and yet there are certain, we get ambushed by the devil. And uh, uh, so that's how I would kind of treat this. Um, there's, there's weaknesses that were susceptible. So the Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus and so. And then he has this name God, Hathaos here. And uh, Hathaos pops up at the end of 13 right down here. See that? Very nice. So you've got this kind of um, uh, this this correspondence, um, a hathaos, uh, which I suggest is like the true God. There seems to be the significance of that. Then we have this liturgical phrase, oikaristosoi. Now we saw that uh, two weeks ago with. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I I give thanks to thee. It's a liturgical phrase. And um, here, of course, in the Pharisee's mouth, it's rather um, uh, ironic or uh, blasphemous. But, but, he, but he, he's generally, genuinely being thankful. And why is he thankful? Well, we, again, we can't really knock him too much that I am not like the remaining people, okay? The hoi loi poi. And that picks up uh, right here right here, the, the loi poi, okay, uh, the rest. Um, now, let's put this away because it's becoming cluttered again. Um, so, um, the rest of men, and then this is very interesting, and he, he has kind of a mini catalog of, of the rest, the, the sinners, that he is not. So, you've got the harpages, the adikoi, the moikoi, or, he says, even as yon tax collector, hutos ho atelones. That's, that's very clever. Uh, it's like uh, Jesus has uh, kind of a twinkle in his eye. Um, and, and I've done a lot of work on these words. Uh, the harpages are the clutchers, like the harpies, you know, from classical mythology. The adikoi are the unjust. And then you have the moikoi. Those are adulterers, okay? 
And then uh, he sums it all up by using the tax collector as the negative uh, 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 example. Uh, and then he says why he's righteous. Um, I fast uh, twice during, here this means the week or the Sabbath or twice per week. Okay, and Art Just Commentary spells this out quite well. Just read the note on that. Um, I give a tenth of all. Uh, as much as I uh, possess, hasak tomai, and okay, uh, and then the tax collector. So we have this this contrast: the Pharisaeus and the Talones being contrasted. Uh, stood uh, uh, a far distant off and did not wish even to raise his eyes into the sky, into heaven. I think this is talking about the posture of homo orons that the Pharisee no doubt ha had, and even Jesus has at the, um, the, feeding, the feeding narratives that you have. Jesus seems to have this. He raised his uh, head into heaven, but the tax collector can't do that. He, he is totally uh, overwhelmed by his sin and unworthiness, right? Um, to look into heaven, but... Uh, look at this, all etupden tostethos, out to legon. But he, again, imperfect. He was smiting his chest. Okay, May, think of that mea maxima culpa. Mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, we say. Uh, my fault, my fault, grievous fault. Um, and, then, and then we have his prayer, O oh God, uh, 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 this is a, 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 an interesting phrase that I don't know we're going to have time to get to here. I believe it's translated, um, uh, be merciful to me, um, to hamartalo a sinner. Uh, okay, so that is the, the tax collector's sin. So um, what we have is God's incredible mercy to this utterly unworthy uh, person, this, this uh, tax collector, um, to say nothing about these other public sinners, the grasping ones, the, the unjust, the adulterers. Um, as if to say that Christ has come for all these sinners and, and offers mercy and, and forgiveness uh, for them all. Um, uh, and then uh, the summation here at the very end. Uh, and, and I say to you, uh, this one having been went down having been justified to his house. Anytime you have east to auton autu, I think house church. Okay, this is how the first Christians used to worship. Uh, Par ekanon, instead of that one, namely instead of the Pharisee, because everyone who exalts himself will be uh, humbled, and everyone humbling himself shall be exalted. Um, so this, uh, another common phrase that you see in the Gospels. Now, that phrase is interesting to me because it occurs in Philippians, chapter 2, verse 3. It's one of these texts I'm working on for my commentary. Uh, Let no one, according to vain ambition, nor according to empty glorifying, but with humility regarding himself as greater than oneself. Okay, that's what it says in, in Paul, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. So the whole idea that when we are Christians, when we're in the church, it's a matter of, of being humbled and being exalted by the Lord and acknowledging our sin, confessing it, and being forgiven. Okay? Um, uh, let's face it, a lot of the Pharisees come out and hear you preach each week. These are the people that are at God's house. And yet, uh, there's a, there's a, I, I would say there's a, a, a danger and blessing for both types. Okay? The Pharisee... Uh, trusts more and more in him or herself um, and can grow cold against the gospel. 
Of course, the tax collector, the publican, those are the people that aren't in church at all. You know, where are they? Well, they're, uh, uh, they're self-righteous in their own way. But the gospel is intended for both groups. Um, it's, it's a text that explodes with, uh, with Christ's mercy for all, uh, whether um, Pharisee or publican. So once again, I'm glad we had time to work through this, and I'm almost out of time. I uh, don't want to exceed 20 minutes, but um, uh, I just pray that you will uh, enjoy the text and uh, preach it with great joy and, and uh, benefit for those Christians that God in Christ Jesus has given you to preach. All the best on that. Thank you.